Hello and good morning. We are still celebrating Nigeria's independence today and our focus is on how the entertainment industry has evolved over the last um, 59 years. My name is Osi Godwin and as usual, I'm never here alone. I'm here with my awesome crew, Ewa Oluwa, Oritsu, and Ife Oluwa, Shankaya. Happy hey Independence guys. Day! Yeah. Happy Independence Day! Yeah. I mean, Happy I see that you guys are so excited, but I don't know if we're supposed to be extraordinarily excited. Uh, well, you should know that I'll be more excited if it was my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and you're Nigeria's mm. birthday. But, we're still but it's grateful. still it's mm. still our country. Mm -hmm. We have to be patriotic mm -hmm. and we have to lead by example. The fact that people are moaning and they're grumbling out there, we don't mm. have to follow the same route. Mm. So let's stay positive, let's stay optimistic that mm. things can only get better mm. going forward. They say as you age, you increase in wisdom. So mm. let's just keep praying that Nigeria That's will increase aging. in mm. wisdom as we grow. Yeah. America is now our mate. Well, let's so your mates. Right? Yes. <laughs> there are times you want to actually be like America and pick and choose, and there are other times you remember, oh, mm. they are not our mates, right? Yep. Anyways, you guys know Tea Time, we are all about entertainment. Right. And entertainment has two major segments. Majorly, of course, there we have the comedy and fashion, but majorly you have music and movies. So mm. on this segment, we are going to focus on... Um, music and before we do just that and also introduce our studio guests let's watch this very quick report on um 59 years of music in nigeria the first time recorded music was heard in nigeria is said to be in 1895. music in nigeria has since grown and evolved into one of the most lucrative forms of art in the country this focus of 59 years of music in nigeria as we celebrate nigeria's independence starts with fela Shawande who was the head of music and music research of the Nigerian Broadcasting Corporation and fought against what he called the appetite in art. His work, The Folk Symphony, was premiered on October 1, 1960, during the independence celebrations. Nigeria has been called the heart of music because of her role in the development of West African high life and the so-called palm wine music, which became the basis for Juju. Babatunde King was the most famous star of the palm wine music and is likely to have coined the word juju. High life, Fuji, juju and Akwala music dominated throughout the 60s to the 80s with a little bit of rise to the Afrobeat sound. With the likes of Aruno Ishola, Tunde Nightingale, Victor Olaya, Ike Dairo. In the early to mid 1970s, three of the biggest names in Nigerian music history rose at their peak Fela Kuti, Ebene Zaobi, and King Sonny Ade. While the end of that decade saw the start of Yo Pop and Nigerian reggae. Most of the sounds were traditional at the time, with different sounds and style of music dominating some region in Nigeria. Fela then switched from high life to Afrobeat, using Pidgin English to cut across the country and as such gaining more prominence nationwide and even internationally. The 1980s saw the rise of the Nigerian reggae and of course this was based on major influences from the likes of Bob Marley. By the early 90s, we had seen a lot of American music, and that was when we started bringing pop sounds and a little bit of hip-hop. Shino Peters, who started gaming prominence at the tail end of the 80s, dominated the 90s alongside King Sonny Ade. The early 1990s also saw the rise of more funky music from the likes of Junior and Pretty. Mm. Mid-90s had us rocking to the remedies which comprised of Tony Tatula, Eddie Remedy and Idris Abdul Karim. They were first to have a nationwide appeal, including Blackie. Two-Face cleared up the early 2000s with the Afropop vibe. He went solo in 2003 and dropped his album in 2004, which had the African Queen track. Yeah, yeah, you are my African Queen. Don Jazzy came into the scene same decade and was able to infuse tradition and Afropop to create various sounds. However, 2010 till date 
has been an infusion of Afrobeat and whatever sound you can blend with it. And like Bonner Boy recently said in an interview, Afrobeat is the dough. Whatever you decide to make out of the dough is on you. The last three years has heralded the rise of the alternative sound and this crop of artists have been dubbed people who still do music with relatable stories and meaning as Afrobeat or Afropop have gone extremely mainstream that it may have lost its value and content. As we celebrate 59 years as a country and seeing the dynamics of music in Nigeria, one can only wonder what the next decade holds. For Plus TV Africa, I am Elsie Godwin. With us in the studio to discuss how far music and music business in Nigeria has come is a Nigerian um, vocalist, singer, and someone who has over 30 years in the music industry, Yinka Davis. Thank you for being here. Welcome once again. Okay, and also, um, before we focus on how we also have Uncle Laulu Akins. Um, he's standing by on the phone to join this conversation. So very quickly, we'll have him also contributing and telling us how it has been. I mean, he's the one who produced the likes of um, Shino Peters. I mean, you can name them, actually. So, but back to you. You've seen the report. And I, I saw you <sighs> cringing. and like, oh, this was wrong. This is right. You, I mean, you can't, we can't take a way experience and being on the field when all this is happening how would you say it has evolved over the years well the, the <laughs> hey nigeria happy nigeria day 59 years of incredible incredible roller coaster journey mm. thank you thank you nigeria for mm -hmm. being for you know we will be there for you regardless of what we have Cutting ourselves into, especially us as people. I think you're with us, so let's just go straight to so Uncle Akins. Oh, let's speak. Okay, I'm um, holding. Let, 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 let's 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 hear his voice. Let's hear his voice. Um, hello, Uncle Laulu. Hello, Uncle Laulu. Can you hear me? Good morning, sir. Good morning. Happy Independence. Happy Independence anniversary. Happy Independence Day, sir. Yeah. Okay, with your um, level of experience in the industry, how far would you say the industry has come, especially in music? Well, I think the, the, the industry has gone, has gone very far. Uh, industry has gone very far. Uh, even though we have had beatbox there and there. Okay. Um, but we can, we can gladly say the industry has evolved. Uh, tremendously, we have uh, quite a number of young Nigerian artists doing very well internationally. Uh, even, even though I would, I would say that our industry have also, has also suffered uh, some setbacks in certain ways. Uh, in, in the area of, uh, say, infrastructural uh, development for the industry to really thrive and make, and make profit. You know, so what I uh, haven't said that, I think we can simply say that we have come very, very far. And we have made some strides, we have made some successes. Even though some of them may be pocket successes, but Nigerian uh, music has, uh, has developed greatly. Okay, so Mr. Akins, if there's anything you would like to change about the industry presently, the industry as it stands now, what would it be and what would you do differently? Okay, for instance, in my own days, uh, when, when, when we were really, really practicing and we were on stage and recording, we had a, a more robust and uh, very dependable, you know, checks and balances situation where we had people, experienced people who determined or who skip to vet music, music uh, pieces that are recorded uh, before they were put out. Yeah. And uh, they were able to help the artists develop in the right direction. Uh, today, we have everybody just doing their own thing. And uh, it's difficult to, to say, for instance, set a certain kind of standard for music that is you know, put in the market. So we, in that area, we have suffered uh, some setbacks because every every type of song, you know, 
have put together today and put in the market. Nobody checks the standards. Mm. Even radio stations who play music today no longer vet the kind of music they play on, the, on their programs. Uh, presentation itself has suffered because any, anything is put on radio today and any kind of, uh, you know, wish you wash you. Okay, so I'm so sorry, I have to drag the, uh, are you with us, sir? Yes, he is. Uh, yes, yes, we can, yes. sir. So I'm so sorry, but I have to drag um, the. I would, I would, I would, I would, I would like to see better structures put in place. Okay. Uh, structures that we had, we had recording companies, we had you know uh, manufacturing companies, we had market companies, you know distribution companies. Today, we have. Uh, all kinds of labels, all kinds of people distributing records and are not bringing returns to the owners of the work. Mm. So such infrastructural uh, facilities you know, are no longer there and they should be there mm. so that we can put you know, proper standards in place for the artists that are coming up and we can help them develop accordingly yeah. and they can, be, they can be acceptable to the mainstream whether in Nigeria or outside of Nigeria. Okay, so before we let you go, do you think we have um, standard record labels in Nigeria? We have what? Standard record labels in Nigeria. No, that's what I just said. That's what I just said. Mm -hmm. The standard has gone away. The Europeans took them away mm. once they left Nigeria. And since that time, we have not been able to put those structures in place, mm. you know. Uh, but we have people who are doing well, who are trying, but it's not spreading as it should spread, you oh. know. All right. Uh, in, in those years, we had so many record, record, recording companies, and they were all doing very well, bringing out new artists, you know, developments, you know, um, well standardized. Mm. All right, okay. so being a veteran, um, I would like to drag NBC and Carson. Would you say you're a beneficiary of royalties, as it should be, if... Person is actually working properly. So, are you a beneficiary of royalties? Hello. Hello. Are you there, sir? I am there. Okay, sir. So, I said, uh, being a veteran in the music industry, you should ordinarily be a, a beneficiary of getting royalties if Carson is working properly as it should be. Like you said, there are some bodies that should be in place, but I think we have those bodies, but do we have competent people there that are supposed to do the right thing? I think they're not doing. So my question to you is, are you a beneficiary of royalties? Well, I, I'm, I, I, I am a beneficiary of royalties, but not from Nigeria. Mm. Mm. So, but we are have you, this body. Are, are you with me? Yes, sir. So, I, if you ask me, I was I, I, I was a part of the the, the, the development that brought Koson to life. Mm. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, with you, sir. And and uh, but today, what we have found out is that uh, Koson is run, is not running as it should. Uh, you know, those who are supposed to be benefiting from the, you know, from their work through the work through, through the management and works of Kosan, are not directly benefiting. You know, uh, and and we were seeking to have a proper structure in that area. We thought we had it, but the handling of it to date has not been you know has, has not been satisfactory at all. So, in essence. Most of the people who ought to benefit, whose works get used on air mostly, are not getting any returns. Mm. So we need to look seriously into its management and running. All right, let's, let's come back to uh, let, I mean, let, Uncle Laulu. Let, let, hold on. Let us say something. Okay, no, ask no, a no. question. No, he's still on the he's line. Still on the line. Okay. okay, but I saw you jotting a lot. Morning, Uncle Laulu. <laughs> Hi, Madeline. How are you? Ah, they fight plenty, sir. Good morning. Happy Independence Happy Nigeria Day. Big hops. Ugs, ugs, ugs. Okay, so um, I saw you jotting down A and R when he talked about standard of music. And <sighs> I mean, you have a lot to say already. Where do you want to start from? 
he's pretty much said everything. Mm -hmm. So really, he's I, I totally I'm in support of everything and the checks and balances he talked about. Talked the, the structure is actually the major problem is transparency. Mm -hmm. We are not honest with one another. Oku, we are not honest. We have stopped those who work under those particular. Uh, foreign bodies who were who, who are still here. Some of them are suppressed. Some of them are silenced, or maybe I don't know, killed, <coughs> possibly. But the body of entertainment now needs help. Hmm. Serious wake-up call. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I decide that every day. <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Ali Alibaba? Alibaba. Right oh, Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do Everybody feeling alright. Still make music and people are still buying. I'm sorry, they look myself minimal. Are you? music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, what? <laughs> Welcome back. We're still celebrating Nigeria's independence and looking at how the entertainment industry has evolved with um, special focus right now on the music industry. You were saying something before you were interrupted. There was an era, um, uh, I believe it must have been the 50s, between the 50s and the 60s. Those who reigned was after the <coughs> show. What was that, that program? Um, that's your little segment. You left, you <coughs> omitted all the Atalade, the Balamilas. Mm. You left them all alone. But then, but you did excellent. So now I know about Fela. I like to go and find out about Mr. Fela and then what he did to, for us in Nigeria before 1960. Mm. That was, but that was also um, the great, um, I'll remember him. Daddy that did. <coughs> I'll remember his name. I'll let you know his name. Not for like a day. No. Ah, 59, 57, 58, 56, 55. That was our first. Those are the great. Um, I'll remember his name. His name, Orlando something, something. But Orlando, not Orlando or Julius. There was another Orlando. Ah, okay. <laughs> All right. Not okay. A, um, uh, well, how would you describe the modern day sound of music? Do you think it's noise? Because most people will say they're not making music now; they're just making noise. Well, <coughs> the, the, sorry, darling. You know, first of all, I need to say something about the generation now. Mm -hmm. The generation now is popcorny, mm. quick fixes. Mm. It's immediate. The online thing you can get. How did that lady make it? That lady, the one that sang about Olu Omo, she um, she went yeah. online, and that's how she became a. Um, Tani. So that, that's the name, beautiful lady, as she became because some other people told her she couldn't sing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is just find a way to get yourself go viral, and once you go viral, you're on top of. It. And so. The whole, everything is in the clouds. Well, now that the clouds is going on, you have to find something to quickly milk into whatever mm. you can make and whatever you can. So this generation has gone beyond. But do you believe in yourself as an artist? First mm. question. So basically, the industry has really evolved with international recognition. Now we see a lot of our artists, the likes of Two-Face, um, Two David Doe, Wizkid, Hiwa Savage, they're doing well internationally. And we're beginning the Afro pop or Afro beat sound pop. is now, yeah, let's put it as Afro pop because it's really not Afro beat, but they like to refer to it as that outside. So now we're beginning to garner a lot of recognition. Do you think we should invest more? Do you think this is the time for the government to actually come in and invest in our entertainment or we should keep exporting our greats out there and they're signing international deals and the, the, we're not getting the revenue back in our own country when we can be making millions and billions of dollars from this industry. What's your take on that? First of all, forget the government. Forget it. When the government will wake, when they wake up, 
they will catch up. Mm. God knows when. You, on the other hand, can we do, be our own government and do right by ourselves? Mm. First question, can we put a structure mm. in place that protects each artist, whether the person is young or old, oh boy, forget it. Once we can get ourselves together, we will know exactly what to do. That was what um, Nollywood has done something. They've been able to keep themselves. I don't know. I, I haven't been, you know, I haven't been in the circuit for a bit, for a bit now. But I know that try actors guild. They, they're doing what they can to keep themselves together, together and hold the house. It's a foundational problem. Once there's a foundational problem, there's a problem. Mm. We, our government needs to find themselves first, so they don't need <laughs> to come and be looking for what kind of English you are. No, 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 no. Please go and sort your house out. So right. and, uh, yeah, I think quickly, uh, let's bring in Uncle Laulu. Hey, Uncle Laulu, let him touch on this question you just asked. Uncle Laulu, are you there? Yeah. Okay. So on investment and waiting for the government, do you think we need to wait for them to build the structure we need? Uh, well, first, first and foremost, uh, the industry must be must stabilize enough to, to give confidence to investors. Mm. Mm. Okay? We, we, need, we do not need to depend on government for funding. There are, there are, there are finance, finance organizations who, can, who, sh who should feel confident to invest in the industry. Therefore, I think the industry needs to first get itself together properly. Uh, I, I, I tell you, a lot of a lot of people are working in isolation. Exactly. Uh, therefore, it's difficult to set standards for everyone. And you know, uh, we, are, we are we are having people who are forming maybe cartels <coughs> that some some artists, young artists, young artists cannot penetrate. So, like I said earlier, there are pockets of successes, but this, the foundation is not there for many people to become successful. So we do not need to depend on government funding. Government needs to put the infrastructure and in the, the enabling environment in place. Mm -hmm. Then people will find the industry stable enough to invest in because then they know they will get their returns, mm -hmm. the returns on their investment. So okay. we, we in the industry must put, bring ourselves together to the level that people will develop confidence in our arts, in our inputs, and they will find it a viable area for investment. Not the government, government can't bring the money, but they can provide an environment. Exactly. And we ourselves need to get ourselves together. You know, there is so much apathy in the industry. Oh when you call the industry together, you find some people feel too big to be, to, to be a part of it, but some people are even afraid to be a part of it. So we are not really together as an industry. So it's difficult for us to attract that high investment that we should have. Once the, what the foreign, the foreign uh, companies went away, the, everything went away with them. Yeah, Uncle Lau, So we are just working Uncle in isolation. Lau, we are working. You, somebody will make success there. Another will make success there. But the, the level is not good enough for the, the foundation is not good enough for everybody who has talent who works hard to become successful. Uncle Laulu, so can you hear me? So that is issue we need to sort out. You know, we need Hello, to Uncle Laulu. We need to come together. Hello, we Uncle need Laulu. to find a point where we understand that if you defraud uh, company A, you cannot come to company B as an artist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's if you are being disloyal to a promoter A or producer B, you cannot go to anybody and just take your work and say, look, go there. And a lot of that is happening now. Even artists are denying their contracts. So to bring investment into the industry is difficult. Okay. Okay. Yeah. She's asking a question now. Can you hear me? Am I? Can, can you, you hear can me? You hear her? Am I what? Oh, okay. Can you are hear you with her? Us, sir? Are you with us, sir? Can you she, hear her? What's the question? I, I'm with you. You said something about the foreign um, uh, music people leaving. Can you give us a bit of background why they left? Can you give us a background on why the foreigners left us? Oh, well, first and foremost, it was piracy. At that time, the, the laws, the, 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 power, the powers in Nigeria could not, you know, we could not fight piracy well enough. 
and they decided that the invest, their investments was going to, I mean, they, they had enough losses and they just left. But now we have gotten over piracy in a, in a way because there's modern technology, on, online streaming, online downloading, all, all of that and all of that. Even though there's online piracy, but it's not as bad as physical piracy, which we had at the time. So, but what, what, what then happened that when they left was there's a, there was a vacuum created and nobody was able to step into that vacuum to, prov to provide, you know, the, the kind of, uh, you know, substance that they provided while they were here. So everything was in a bit of disarray, you know. So therefore you see that all of these artists, the Tiwa Savage that you mentioned, the... Uh, Banky W and all the rest of them came up through very, very hard and thin lines. And it was not supposed to be so because as talented as they are, they should attract, you know, companies that can put them, you know, give them backbone, uh, you know, which was what was provided by those companies, CBS, Sony Music, EMI, uh, Aphrodisia, Decca, Polygram and Premier, you know, all of them. But soon as they found that their investments was good, waiting, waiting, you know, going away, they just packed up and go and went, and went rather. So we, we, we lost that, but we haven't been able to, do, you know, replicate it or find any level of, uh, uh, you know, solid investment and standardization that the young ones can thrive upon. Okay, sorry. Uncle Lalu, what would you suggest can be done now to bring the music industry back together? No, so I think first and foremost, we, we, we as an industry, those who are, have identified themselves to be a part of industry, must decide to work together as one. So together we can sit down to look at our problems, to look at how we can set standards for everybody that's practicing within the industry. So that no matter who you are, no matter what role you play in the industry, there are rules and regulations for which you will practice that you know will also guarantee your success, that you cannot cheat, you cannot defraud, you cannot be disloyal, and you will enhance your work by doing what investors you know, have uh, asked from you, and you yourself will benefit in return. So those are the things that I feel. So once we decide, we, we find the level of, I mean, the, the state of coming together, and deciding that we do have an industry to protect, to work for, then we should begin to look at standards where we can set, and that will be part that will lead us to the infrastructure that we need. Okay, somebody gives me a, a 200 million loan, and I and I sign a, a, you know five artists, and at the end of the day, you know uh, a, a few years down the road, maybe two years, the artists are singing discordant tunes, are saying, oh look. That company is not good. They haven't been paying me royalty. They never ask how well their work is doing. They themselves never work to improve, you know, to increase their popularity or to support the company. You know, they think that when the investor has invested, they, they can just record and go away. You know, so those are the things that we need to streamline and change. So the attitude of the artist must change. The, you know, the, the, the attitude of uh, uh, practitioners must change. So all of us need to change together to form and to become responsible enough to actually work within an industry and the regulations that binds, binds the industry together. Then we can begin to see, we will begin to see successes that, that is not even, that is not, you know, uh, a, a few of, uh, of the people, but all of the people or most of the people. Thank you so much, Uncle Lowly, for your time. Thank you for having me. Okay. Thank you so much, Uncle. Yeah, so we need to move to Nollywood. But before that, what would you personally like to see in the industry changing from now? Hmm, that's, that's, that's a big one. That's a big one. Well, it's just that united front. I, when, you, when you, you know, the backbitings, the, you must be accountable. Mm -hmm. If you can't be accountable, what are we responsible? Mm -hmm. If you can't be, then don't bother. Let me make it very clear. The Banky W's, 
the Dibanjis. Do you know how they made it? You all are aware how they made it. They made sure they made it. Mm. They pumped their own money mm. into their own. And so that's why everybody's working in isolation. Mm. Mm. Now, when you are working like that, you would not care about anybody yeah. else. Yeah. You can't blame them. Don't blame the young people. When they're using their own life and their own sweat and their own blood to become people, mm. you expect them to come and be with you, then you better go and carry, oh yeah, sorry, Augusta. Oh, you mm. now become a madame, a yes, uncle. Man. Yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Because we are not getting it right. And not that we don't know what to do. We refuse to do what to do right for them. So it is our fault, not their fault. Mm. But you're speaking from a place of passion. Most of exactly. them Exactly. Yes. A lot of them do not care about the craft now. They care about the money. And the fame. You can't blame fame. them when they care about the money. Did we try to give them something to care about? First question. Hmm. So I have major issues. So I'd rather we, when we get the, eventually, a lot of us will have this forum and we'll talk properly about, because this is, I'm sorry, this is not television talk I'm, as far as I'm concerned. But happy Nigeria Day. When the time is right for us to do a good thing, because we're going to do something in another segment. Iconic. I believe iconic. We will talk. And then not only talk, we will walk the talk. talk. Mm. Thank mm. you so much Thank for the time you. for being here. Thank you very much for coming. All right, so we're going on a quick break. And when we come back, we'll definitely move right into Nollywood to see how to change the industry and, of course, how far we've come in that space. We'll be right back.